This is the story of your lungs and their deadliest enemy, tuberculosis. Your lungs, as you know, supply your body with air. They work like a bellows, filling up with fresh air when you inhale and squeezing out the bad air when you exhale. Tuberculosis is caused by tiny invisible that get into the body through the nose and mouth. They travel down the throat. And when they get inside the lungs, this is what happens. They eat away the lungs. But before we get into that, let's visualize something we have all seen. Imagine for a moment that these lungs are two leaves. Ah, that's it, good. Now, you've all seen a leaf that has been eaten by tiny insects. But have you ever seen one close? See what's happening? The insects are feasting. The leaf actually is being destroyed. Remember these two leaves, for this is exactly what happens to the lungs when tuberculosis attacks. It destroys them. Only a tiny spot at first, but unless this danger spot is discovered and cared for, it will slowly grow, gradually consuming all of the lungs, first one and then the other and so he dies. Tuberculosis is a communicable disease. That simply means it passes from a sick person to a well person. For instance, Mr. Smith, the shopkeeper, coughs a lot. <coughs> One of his regular customers is Mrs. Brown. She comes in almost every day. Quite unknown to her, Mr. Smith is sick. He has tuberculosis. His lungs are full of germs. Mrs. Brown's lungs are healthy enough, but she is exposed to Mr. Smith's coughing almost daily over a long period of time. <coughs> Germs from his sick lungs go into the air. Mrs. Brown breathes some of these germs into her lungs. And when she leaves the shop, an unseen enemy goes with her. When she goes home, she takes into her house a dangerous disease. Like a cloud passing over the sun, the shadow of tuberculosis falls across this home, menacing the whole family. However, the disease does not strike immediately. Several months go by before Mrs. Brown begins to notice its symptoms. During the day, she feels weak and tired. The household chores seem too much for her. She finds she cannot eat. All her appetite is gone and she loses weight. Her husband notices these things and worries about her. When finally she begins to cough, <coughs> he begins to suspect tuberculosis, and so immediately he takes her to a doctor. First, the doctor examines her carefully. Then he checks a sample of sputum under the microscope. Then he shows her an X-ray machine, a wonderful machine that can see inside the human body. He asks her to stand in front of a photographic plate. Then he turns on the X-rays. Later, the doctor shows the X-ray plate on a lighted screen, and there she sees a picture of her lungs. And there, where the doctor's hand points, is the beginning of tuberculosis. The X-ray has given the proof she does have the disease. But how could this have happened, the husband asks. Tuberculosis, the doctor says, has many different ways of getting from one person to another. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a man with tuberculosis. If he coughs in his friend's face, the friend is apt to get it too. But the friend doesn't have to be this close. Suppose the friend were to stand way over here. He still runs a chance of getting the disease. How? Well, suppose the sick man spits in the street. Now, tuberculosis germs live in the sputum of a person who has it. So they are in the spit. Even though the spit dries up, the germs do not die, especially if it's in a shaded place. They remain alive in the dust, sometimes for several days, until a wind picks them up and carries them along. Perhaps they blow near the friend. 
If he breathes the dust with the germs into his lungs, the friend is apt to get tuberculosis too. Will my husband and my children get tuberculosis simply because I have it, Mrs. Brown asks. No, not if you will isolate yourself from others, the doctor explains. The most important thing you can do is to keep from passing the disease on to other people. For example, here is one of the most common ways tuberculosis spreads. Here is a person with tuberculosis who is sleeping in a room without windows or other ventilation. Worse yet, the family is also sleeping in this room. The sick person coughs often during the night. <coughs> and soon, all the air in the room is filled with invisible germs. Knowing what we do about tuberculosis, it's easy to see that the rest of the family is being dangerously exposed to it. The sick person should be moved to another room and isolated from the family. Furthermore, that room should have a window in it so it'll be well ventilated. In fact, all sleeping rooms should be well ventilated. The doctor gives Mrs. Brown a list of things to do to protect her family. And she goes home determined to follow his instructions. She arranges with a neighbor to come in and do the cooking and take care of the family. Then she herself goes to bed in a room isolated from the rest of the family. The doctor has said her cure will take a long time and will depend on complete rest. Whenever she coughs, she covers her mouth. <coughs> a spec cup is set aside for her. No one else ever drinks out of it. She knows spitting is bad, so she always spits in a jar. Then the jar is scalded with boiling water for at least 10 minutes. She washes her hands often so the germs will not be carried on things she touches. Her personal dishes are washed in boiling water every day and kept apart from the rest of the families. Boiling water kills tuberculosis germs, and so does sunshine. The germs cannot live more than a few seconds when exposed to direct sunlight. For this reason, Mrs. Brown's clothes are always hung in the sun after they're washed, and her blankets are aired in the sun often. Good food is important. It helps build a healthy body, and a healthy body means good lungs. When he goes shopping, her husband remembers the doctor said she was to eat fruits and meats and lots of green vegetables, in addition to the usual corn and beans and rice. So he gets oranges for their juice. And when they're in season, such things as bananas and melons. He gets meat when he can, or eggs, which have the same food values and are very good for sick people. Sometimes he gets poultry instead, turkey or chicken. And once in a while, for variety, he gets fish. He often gets milk. But before his wife or anyone else drinks it, it's boiled, because milk sometimes comes from cows that have tuberculosis. The boiling is important, for it kills the germs. When it comes to vegetables, there are more kinds than he realized. Tomatoes, string beans and carrots, beets, cabbage, yes, and spinach. He even decides to grow his own vegetables, so his wife may have plenty of these good foods. By isolating herself, Mrs. Brown protects her husband, her children, and her community. Only after she is completely cured does she rejoin her friends and loved ones. Her story is not an unusual one. Tuberculosis can be cured. But most important of all, its spread can be prevented by the intelligent, sensible practice of isolating the sick from the well.